Hi, in this particular tutorial we're going to talk about how to download GIS data from the Fact Finder website and turn it into GIS data. There's a lot of different ways that we can do, to, do this, a lot of different dimensions in which we can look at data, different enumeration units. For this exercise we're going to look at county level GIS data and you can see here we have counties and we're going to talk about something called the join here. Now you can see in our GIS data there's 100 counties for the state of North Carolina. What we're going to try to do is find housing status. We're going to find the percentage of people who live in owner occupied housing as opposed to rental occupied housing. So you can he see here for the 100 counties in North Carolina we have a name, state name, ca state FIPS, county FIPS, and a total FIPS code which is just the concatenation or combination of the state FIPS code and the county FIPS code that we've talked about before because when we go and download data from the census website, from the fact finder website, it's going to give it to us in an Excel spreadsheet. I would strongly suggest you hit pause here if there's something that you don't understand or go back and figure out how to do this yourself. Learning how to do GIS and learning how to download these data, it's, it, it takes a little bit of skill to do this. So I want to point out a few things that I want you to understand and I'm going to go through and kind of glaze over it fairly quickly, but I want you to take the time to go through and understand not only what I did, but why I did it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Fact Finder website. We've talked about this before. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my topics. And like I said before, I'm going to look for census SF1 data here. I'm going to look for 2009. Uh, let's see, I'm going to click on my topics. And I'm going to click on, let's see, I've got my program. And I'm going to click on my data set here. Okay, and I'm going to click on 2010 SF1 data. These are data that get down to the block level, but I'm just going to look at stuff at the county level. And I'm going to click on this. In the upper left hand corner you can see my selections here. Okay, you can see general housing characteristics. This is the thing that I'm actually going to select. But the next thing I have to do is uh, select a geography. Otherwise it will just give me information for the entire United States. And you can see I can go all the way down to the census tract, but for here I'm going to click on for here I'm going to click on county. And it's going to ask me for state. I'm going to select North Carolina and I'm going to select all counties. Okay, and I'm going to close this dialog here. So in the upper left hand corner here I've got 2010 SF1 100% data, all counties within North Carolina. And I'm just going to click on my very first table QT-H1 and this is my general housing characteristics here. If I want to really want to view what they look like I can, but I'm going to go through and download these. And it's going to create these as a zip file. And we've talked before about how to unzip files here. And I'm going to download these depending upon your operating system. You can save them a number of different ways here. Okay, and these are my downloads here. I'm working with Windows 7, so it downloads it to this uh, temporary file. And remember here, I'm going to click on Extract. And I'm going to extract it to something called Census. And here's my census temp folder here. And when I open this up, it's going to open it up as a CSV file. Some pretty neat things here. Okay, this is just an Excel spreadsheet. This is technically what we call a CSV, comma separated values. Okay, so if I open it up in a text file, you would see that this is this is this is going to be separated by commas here. You can see here I have a G, something called the GOID, GOID2 here. You see I have a Alamance County, comma North Carolina because what I'm trying to think of right now is how do I find a key so that I can run a join between my GIS data layer here and this table right here. Now a couple things that we need to keep in mind here is that we have a something that we want to map here. Okay, and what I want to map it here, and this is just general occupancy status here for this SF1 data. The thing that I want to look at is owner occupied. Okay, and you can see the number of owner occupied units, but when we work with the Fact Finder 2 website, we get a lot better data here in terms of giving us it also gives us the raw number, but it also gives us the percentage of people who live in owner occupied housing. We can look at this at the county level or even the sub county level. But I'm gonna look at this for the county level because we can imagine for 
places that have higher percentage of owner-occupied housing, there's going to be more stability as opposed to places which have more rental ship and more instability and volatility in terms of the housing market. Okay, you can see one here has 82% right here. Okay, this county here has 82% of the people live in owner-occupied uh, housing in Camden County here. It's going to be less here in this first one here, Alamance County. And there's a number of different reasons for this. It may not be just volatility, it may be the number of young people or students or whatever living in a particular place here. Now, one of the problems that we have here is that when we open up this table right here, we have 100 records. Okay. When we open up this one, it's got some of this header information. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through and copy these folders here because I just need one header. Okay, and I'm going to copy these, or I'm going to hit Control X, which means copy and paste, and stick these right here. Okay, because you notice right here, I'm going to look for this one called SO5, the second one called SO5, and when it renames it, it's going to make it a little prettier here. Okay. Next thing I need to do is just go through and get rid of these, delete these. So now this starts to look like something that I can call, that I can bring into my GIS data layer here. Okay. Looks like something I can bring into my GIS data layer. Okay. So this is my SO5 right here. This is the thing that I'm going to map here. And if I really wanted to, I could delete all the other fields or whatever. Okay. And I'm going to click File, Save As. And I'm just going to call this census data. Okay. Let me see how I can save it. I can save it a number of different ways, too. And one way I was looking at it, maybe save it as a DBF file. Those work pretty well. Okay, and I'll click OK here. Okay, so I've got my ID here, ID 2. Uh, my geography, and then all of these file names here, okay, because I just need one header row here. And click Save again, and it's out of it. Uh, I'll click No there. Now, in order to make GIS data here, I'm going to click Add Sign here, Add Data, and I'm going to go up to my Census Temp. Here's my DBF file. Okay. Now, when we open it up here, one of the problems that we see here is that this ID two, okay, because I we're going to talk start talking about keys, okay, and you can see here in my GIS data layer, I have something called the name. When I look at my census data, it's called Alamance County, comma North Carolina. Okay, this one's just called Dare or Alamance or whatever here. Okay, so this isn't going to be an appropriate key, but I do have an appropriate key here with the FIPS. Now, do you notice the FIPS here is left justified? The FIPS here is right justified. Okay, that's going to be a problem here. And if I had to go through and just try to run a join right now, like we did previously, okay, if I were to try to join my FIPS with my census data, you notice that it doesn't have FIPS as a possible thing to select from because it's not being treated as text. We need to somehow treat this as text. Okay. Now there's a couple different ways I can do this. Okay. Here's probably the easiest way. I can go through and reformat this, but what I'm going to do here is just add a brand new field. I'm going to call it FIPS, and instead of making it an integer, I'm going to make it a text. And I'm going to give it a length of 25, and I'm going to click OK here. So basically I'm just going to trick it into turning this number right here, this ID2, I'm going to trick it into making it a text. And I'm going to do my field calculator. So when I calculate the field here, it's, I'm just going to make it ID2. And I'm going to click OK. And you, now you notice that it's left justified. I told it when I created this field called FIPS, I said it was going to be a text. Now it's left justified. Okay. Here it's right justified, so it treats it as a number. Now it's less justified and it's treated as a text. Okay, so now when I go through and do my join, I'm going to join my FIPS with my census data. Now I have a field here called FIPS that I'm able to do that with. Okay, I'm able to do that with here. Okay, and I'm going to click OK, yes. 
Now, one last thing when we look at this census data here, you notice that we have SO5. Now it's called SO56, okay? And it rounded it up to 67%. We looked at these percentages here. A lot of times when you bring things into DBF, it might round it up to integers. It might keep them the same. It's going to be up to you to dictate how they are. Another thing that we can do is bring these into a personal geo database and manage these in Microsoft Access. Okay, these just rounded these up when I converted it to a DBF file. That's probably not the best way to do this. If we're looking at sub-county level data, we want things saved as decimal points. For the sake of this exercise, I'm just bringing these into DBF. I can also export this, bring this Excel into here, and then export it to the DBF since Excel doesn't really, um, Microsoft, uh, ArcGIS doesn't really like to work it with Excel as much as a DBF or it really loves to work with personal geodatabases and tables within a file geodatabase or a personal geodatabase. Now when I open up my join here, my join table here, you notice here I can sort these. Sort ascending, alamance, and now it has these extra tables that we have here. And we were looking at the second SO5 here, this one right here, and we can go through and map this. Okay, so now I can look at this here, I can look at quantities, now let's go through and map S056. Okay. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see the percentages that it has it in here. Okay, this is just using natural breaks here. I can go through and change this to a quantile here. Okay. Very interesting here. See what we have here? These lower areas have a lower percentage of people with owner occupied housing. Okay, meaning that there's a lot more rental ships in these lighter areas. There's a lot more home ownership in these darker areas here. You can see in Charlotte, Greens, uh, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, uh, this is Durham, uh, Raleigh, and Chapel Hill. A lot less of the people own their own homes, which means there's a lot. You can imagine there's a lot more younger people and students here. Here, I would imagine there's probably a lot more. Uh, kind of farming and seasonal work there where people aren't going to be able to live there year round. Okay. So we can go through and do that. So we can go and do that. Okay. But you notice here when we open this up here, we can look at this new appended table here that's just basically been synced up here. Okay. Now a couple things to keep in mind when we go through and make these maps. We still need to actually make the map, so we have to adhere to cartographic principles, projections, and all that stuff here. This is just a geographic projection here. You can see that it has it in degrees, so it's not very pretty. Um, I'm just showing this for demonstration purposes. Another thing that we can also do is, when we download these data here, you can go through and format these. Okay. So when I open up this original file right here, this CSV, I can go through and give these names that I want to. A lot of times when we bring these into ArcGIS, the reason why I gave these S01, S02, S02, S03 is because they were fairly unique names. Okay, you can see that we have two or three different uh, rows here. It's only going to understand one row. So some of the problems that we have here is that another thing we have is we have spaces here. A lot of time Excel or ArcGIS, they don't like having spaces in uh, attribute names. Okay, so if we can go through and maybe replace these, all of these are called occupancy status. This is called tenure. So these are going to be very in vacancy status. So these are going to be very difficult to differentiate from each other. That's why I was looking at SO5 versus the second SO5, and then we brought it into the DBF file. It gave it some name after the uh, it gave it SO56 that we can go through and understand that I knew synced up to this particular file right here, and I kind of remembered what these values were here. Okay, and the other thing we can do is just export this into a personal geo database. Okay, and we can create this personal geo database by going to our our catalog right here. Um, okay. Census temp. We can create a new personal geo database. Okay, and you can see here when I open up my census, I can open up here. 
and now I can do some I can manage and I can bring these into I can bring that Excel data I can go to import right here and I can bring in my Excel spreadsheet that I just created and managed over here that I just downloaded I can bring that into access and then bring that in my GIS within the confines of a personal geo database okay so there's a lot of things to keep in mind here but this is probably the most simple way to create something fact finder fact finder website here and turn into GIS data the other thing at the sub county level we have census tracts so you just need to be sure that your census tracts and your FIPS codes line up with the appropriate FIPS codes for the county that you're looking at here so make sure they line up and be very careful of those okay because at the sub county level they're not going to have names okay they're just going to have FIPS codes as we saw here we looked for the county name we have a county name here but that was a little more tricky because I had a common in North Carolina at the end of it we just simply use that FIPS code which is that unique identifying information so the most, most important thing that we need to work with when we work with um, when we work with census data is that one make sure we have a unique identifying key make sure they're both text we can't have one as a number and one as a text and make sure everything is synced up and we're able to have a one-to-one -one relationship between our enumeration units whether it's 100 counties and 100 records or you know the 53 census tracts in Durham County versus the 53 census tracts that it should report for us okay